in John chapter 6 verse 48. He said, I am the bread of life. And in John 6, 33, he added a little texture to it. He said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. So there were two things Jesus wanted us to know. The first is that the food of your spirit is not earthly. Because this bread that you need, it came down from heaven. While you feed on earthly material, you must also feed on heavenly material. If not, your earthly dimension will be robust, but your heavenly dimension will die. You know, man is a spectacular creature in the realm of God. Man is the only being God created that three different kinds of life are at work in him at the same time. Your body is sustained by a different life. He said the life of the flesh in Leviticus 17, 11 is in the blood. So the fleshly dimension of you is sustained by a life that operates in your blood. Because your flesh came from the dust, you will depend on the resources from the dust to survive. If not, that life will die. And if anything wants to attack your fleshly life, it will attack your blood. That's why when you go to the hospital for diagnosis, they just take a sample of your blood. They say, go home. They can come back and tell you everything about your body because the life of your flesh is in your blood. The reason you, you don't eat for 24 hours and suddenly you become a calm and gentle man is because life is dissipated and you are not refilling. Now, some of you have not fed your spirit in one month. Imagine what your spirit is like. That's why when they say pray for five minutes, it looks as if you want to die. Because imagine somebody who has been bedridden for six months. You now say, come, let's go for Olympics. You want to kill the person. There's no energy in the flesh. That's how some, spirit, some of our spirits are. So when you come and we say, let's pray for one hour. The first thing is that you are shocked. How can I pray non-stop for one hour? Is it possible to pray for one hour? Because there's no, there's no energy in the spirit life. But if they say, let's watch a movie for 12 hours. Come on. You can, there's so much capacity. The reason is because there are three kinds of life working in you right now as you are sitting here. The fleshly life that is sustained by flesh. And then the soulish life that is sustained by breath. He said in Genesis 2-7 that when he formed the man from the ground, he breathed into the man the breath of life and the man became a living soul. So the life of the soul is the breath. And that's why when breath is withdrawn from you, you check out. No matter how strong you are, when breath go, your soul departs. Because your soul will go to where breath came from. That's where that life is from. But in Genesis 2.9, there is a tree of life that he planted in the garden that was supposed to feed the spirit of the man. So every day, man is supposed to feed his body, his soul, and his spirit. You feed your body with the physical meals that you have. You feed your soul with facts and information so that they strengthen. All of the gates you have, your eyes, your ears, they are to feed your soul as well. So don't say, I am spiritual, I am spiritual, and you know nothing about nothing. You will not have relevance. Even the apostles that Jesus raised, Paul was better than them. Because the soul of Paul was more refined than their souls. Because when God needed matters of doctrine to be captured, they didn't have enough intelligence to articulate it. They knew Jesus as much as Paul, but Paul had a more refined soul. So why Peter wrote three letters? Paul wrote 14. John, who was carried to heaven, wrote five letters. Paul wrote 14. Because the soul is refined. You need to feed your soul as well. Because the level... Some, a, a girl met me yesterday and said, she came from Osuka. Why did she come? She came to tell her family that she's leaving school. The Holy Ghost told her... <laughs> The kind of Holy Ghost that we hear. The Holy Ghost told her that she should leave school now and go and seek the Lord. And she's going to a cave to seek the face of him that dwells in the midst of fire. And I told her, if you do this, you will destroy your destiny. I was there. And I know a thousand and one people who were there too. There will never be a time in your life when the Holy Ghost will tell you to abandon your secular aspect to seek your spirit. The biggest men of God today that are making the greatest impact in this country are all graduates. 
most of the crises you find in church are from military pastors. So they wake up and say, anything they feel like, they just say it. They say, if you bab skin cut, you are going to hair fire. And after a while, you find them in Dubai. <laughs> I started calling. I said, Pastor E.A. Adeboe is a graduate of mathematics. He has a PhD in hydrodynamics. Dr. Paul Enenche is a medical doctor. Pastor Chris Wakilome is an architect. Bishop David Oedeko is an architect. Dr. Odukoya had first class in molecular biology and he went straight to do his PhD because when they graduated, if you have a first class, no need for masters. That's the, the founder of Mountain of Fire. Who told you you can do much for God if your mind is not refined? You don't know there's a soulish life. You must feed the soulish life as well. But Jesus also went further to tell us to feed the spirit man. That's why Matthew 4 verse 4 says, Man shall not live by bread alone. That means man will live by bread. But not by bread alone. But by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. Because the bread of life is what? Him that came down from heaven. And him that came down from heaven is the word of God. And so every time we want to grow in the dimension of Christ that is allocated to the word or the bread of life, we must make feeding the word of God our primary preoccupation. When you begin to do the business of the world, you discover that the business of the world is a daily business. In Matthew chapter 6 verse 11, Jesus was teaching them and he said, give us this day our daily bread. That means if you eat bread daily, man shall not live by bread alone. If you eat bread daily, then you must also what? Eat the word of God daily. Because the business of the world is a daily business. Nothing can replace the business of the world. You can be a choir director. You can be a prayer leader. You can be the head of ushering and protocol. That does not exonerate you from the daily feeding requirement of the world. Because the eating of the world is a daily business. In Luke chapter 11 verse 3, he said, give us day by day our daily bread. Day by day. In Acts chapter 2 verse 46, he said they continued daily in breaking of bread. The business of the world must be a daily thing. If you don't route your daily routine around the world, not too long you will discover that your spirit man will become weak. And if your spirit man becomes weak, not too long you will become a victim. Either of sin and iniquity, or of sickness and death, or of poverty and frustration. Because you will come to realize and discover that Jesus, the bread of life, is the sustainer of man on the face of the earth. And so every time your daily ration is depleted, you will discover that not too long, sickness will come from somewhere. And then you are wondering, what is happening? It means you are not being fed daily. Because the world is supposed to be your defense against invasions. The world is supposed to be your nourisher and your sustainer. A pastor can give you covering, but the covering of a pastor is to a level. The true insurance system of a believer in this world is not another man. It's the word of life. That's why you have to feed on the world daily. The way Christianity has been taught in Africa, it looks as if when you have a pastor or a covering, as we call it, your activity with God, either on the altar or on the world, can end. And there's no problem. So long as you honor your father in the Lord or you honor your pastor with seed, you do everything they say to, to do, you assume that everything is well. No man can be another man's insurance. The true insurance that we have in this kingdom, primarily, is the word of God. And that's why everybody is encouraged to have a daily interaction with the word of God. In fact, for every area of your life, there should be a revelation you are standing on. Your business should have a word you are standing on. Your health should have a word you are standing on. Everything you find yourself to do, don't start until you have encountered a word. Because the bread of life means the sustainer of life. When you say, I am the bread of life, what he's telling you is that 
the quality of your life depends on me. This dimension of Christ is what brings beauty and glory to your life. I am the bread of life means I determine the quality of a man's life. And any area of your life that is suffering is because there is a depletion of the bread of life. You were blessed by the message you just listened to and wish to make Jesus your Lord and personal Savior. Kindly repeat this prayer after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I believe in your Son, Jesus Christ, and that he died for my sins and was raised from the dead for my justification. I therefore confess with my mouth that Jesus is the Lord of my life. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I am born again. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. If you just say this prayer, please send us an email on amodiscipleship at gmail.com or reach us on our website orocomichael.com to enable us to reach you and afford us the privilege to disciple you. God bless you.